Hey, I'm Sarah, welcome to my channel. Two years ago, I jumped from marine biology to become a wildlife artist full time. So on this channel, we're gonna talk about how to paint realistic wildlife textures in nature and also document the process of starting up a business as a full time artist. Okay, welcome or welcome back. We're gonna start with a quick recap of last week's video where I did this outline of the butterfly mural. If you wanna go check out that video, it's gonna be linked above in the cards. We talk a lot about line work and how to use brick as a natural grid to get symmetry in your artwork when you're putting it on the wall. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, we're gonna get into making this beautiful butterfly colorful. So we're gonna start with a purple lilac color in the very top part of the wings. And this is a super sped up time lapse of me mixing colors. You can see the shadow moving quite intensely on the wall there. But we have the colors mixed, so we'll slow it down. And I am just kind of building in purple into the parts of the wings that I left blank. So a few of the parts along the inner edge are gonna be white. Um, in the previous video where I did the outline, I talk a little bit more about the decision for when I was blocking in, um, what to leave blank and what to fill in. But anyway, we're, most of it is gonna be filled in with colors. So I'm basically painting it a solid color and then I'm going back and when I'm mixing the next color, so in this case, I'm adding a little bit of red to get this pinkish purple tone. Then I'm using a bit of a combination of those two colors, the purple I used and this new color to create the blending transition between the two. So this was kind of good because I knew where I was going for the next color band to start with and I could just dip up and get it a bit purplier and do the in-between part. So yeah, and it was really easy because it was really only a few little areas. My inspiration for this butterfly mural was the monarch butterfly and then we wanted to do a rainbow butterfly with this particular client. Really what we wanted to do with this project is create a very smooth gradient throughout all of the colors of the rainbow um, across the, the transition. So I basically had a couple marks for this section. Like I knew I wanted to get to a orange, almost yellow by the bottom of this top part of the wings so that most of the butterfly was kind of that natural true monarch red color at the top where it's widest and there's the most color in that section. And then I wanted to get into the cooler tones towards the bottom of the butterfly. So that's kind of where we're going. And now this is the next color we're doing and you can see it's a nice uh, red tone. It's a bit more bright of a true red from my mixes. So there's even less purple and blue in it. I get a lot of questions about how I do my paint. I feel like that's gonna pop up in the comments of this video uh, because it is mostly a, a blending butterfly challenge. I only have the primary colors. I get them really highly pigmented. So what you wanna do is when you're sourcing paint for murals is when you go to your paint store, I would highly recommend just seeing what um, the agent who's gonna mix your colors recommends for the purest pigment of that color you can get. For example, they have one blue pigment that they use and you can just get the absolute max they're willing to put in your paint to get the most saturated blue color possible. So don't go and pick out a blue you think is nice on the wall or like even if it looks like a bright blue, it could have 14 different pigments in it to mix that color. Probably not 14, probably more like five or six, but it's gonna have a little bit of red to get it on the purple spectrum. It could have a little bit of yellow if it's more of like a turquoise color. And you don't want any of that because it makes it really hard to mix your colors and they don't end up as vibrant. So you wanna go and when you're mixing the colors for a rainbow blending like this, you really wanna go and make, try and get colors as one pigment or two max. I know the one color that this is hard to do with is red. You can get a bright red, you can get a burgundy red. So that's a little tricky and it also makes purples come out a little foggy. They're not as bright and vibrant. Um, so if you wanted, you could get a small quart of just purple color, but everything else you can mix like between, you know, blue and yellow and green, that's all very easy on the spectrum. Same thing with many different red types. Uh, to mix it down and get a nice orange color is pretty easy. It seems to be only between the different mixes and combinations you can do for a red paint pigment um, and blue that kind of makes purple a little trickier. 
but you don't really see purple too, too much in nature anyway. So I hope that made sense, but when you go, I just have red, yellow, blue, I mix everything else, and I also have black and white. And the other tip I have as a sixth can of paint, if you want, there are often mist tints at stores, and they are mostly beiges. So somebody just didn't like a very light beige that they were gonna use for a room and decided not to buy it or it was slightly off from the color. It got a little dark or I don't know, but all of these things are very off white uh, and they're great for doing mixes in your paint. So if you need to lighten up a color, I'll use that instead of white and keep my white for really light colors, if that makes sense. So that's what I do for a mural painting to buy paint. Now we're getting into a nice sunset golden orange tone. I really wanted to get this transition between the top and the bottom half of the wing looking very similar, but also kind of have it be a bit more contrast and lighter um, because the bottom wing is a little closer to us. It's a bit in front. So now we're going into a more bright orange yellow, kind of like a sun orange yellow. And this was one of my favorite colors to paint because it was so much brighter and it, I kind of liked the way it looked against the black outline. And I went up and I added this lighter orange to the bottom of the wing uh, above it, largely because I wanted to increase the contrast and I wanted to make sure I was keeping pace to get all of the colors in the bottom wing. I kind of pick up my pace in the blending a little bit. It was a little, kind of a little slower in the middle section above the wings. And we wanted to make sure that we could fit all the colors in here. So here's a clip of some real time painting footage of me adding the orange in. This is at the end of the day and I'm about to go home. I was painting pretty late in the afternoon to avoid the August heat as I am eight months pregnant. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna jump to the next day now. And this was really fun because I was able to start with a more yellow color and blue is my favorite color. So I had a good goal to get to it by the uh, bottom of the wings here. Each of these color bands I'm doing are taking about uh, somewhere around an hour, I would say. So it's a pretty slow transition to do this type of blending, but you really just gotta have patience with it. And it's so much faster just to take your time and do the blending really well the first time. The lower section of the wings was especially difficult because there was so many black outlines that I was trying to blend around and pull the paint down into the next section of the wing. So it got a little interesting, especially at the bottom where there's, it's really choppy to do. And uh, basically just following the lines of bricks as a guide was mostly what um, made this pretty manageable to stay level with my blending. Otherwise, if I was painting this on a, you know, concrete wall or a interior wall that's drywall where you don't have this uh, natural lines with the bricks. In those situations, what I would do is get a level and make some chalk lines as gauges to keep uh, your color bands level. Now we're getting into some very bright yellow, which is exciting. It's really funny because my mural videos on the YouTube channel aren't doing as well as my canvas videos. And I'm currently painting wildlife canvases right now. I just completed a horse with my son. Uh, he's born now and recording this audio a few months after I've actually painted this in the summer just to try and get through all my footage that I wanted to edit of my projects. And there's just something fun about completely editing the footage that you've captured. And I've been doing my projects in order as I've painted them. So we'll be dipping back into canvas stuff shortly uh, on the channel. So if you like more of that wildlife realism and fur textures and elephant skin textures, more it's coming up soon. But I really enjoy painting big and creating these types of commercial murals and nursery murals for clients. I just, it's so fun to mix up my art career with these larger, you know, well-paying projects that really pay immediately and help float you over as an artist to when your canvases sell. Okay. Selling canvases as an artist can be a bit more feast or famine where murals are pretty steady guaranteed income into the door. So it's really, you know, fun that you get to be a bit of a chameleon in what you want to do each day. And if I feel like 
painting big and quick, I can take on a mural project and this entire butterfly took me about four days to complete. So we are almost done the third day here, just getting into the green band. And then we're about to transition to blue, which is my favorite color on brand with all my ocean stuff. But it's definitely interesting filming these and you know at this point it was so warm the sun was just radiating off of this brick and i was dying i had to go in multiple times if you see the shadow kind of jump around on the wall to cool off in air conditioning it was like 28 30 degrees and it was just baking off this wall at like the inside of a steam sauna that's what it felt like um, the paint was drying pretty much immediately as soon as it touched the wall and uh, it was a, a very fun project, but definitely ambitious to fit in this late in my pregnancy. Creating gradients, especially on a textured surface like brick, is actually a lot easier than you think because what you can do as a technique is when you have your new color that you want to transition to, you paint it in as a band, and then in the area above, you can just feather it out uh, towards the top. So I do this with a dry brush so that there's less paint on your brush and you just kind of drag the brush upwards into the previous color. So it'll catch on some of the areas of the brick, the really, you know, surfaces that are bumped out and all the surfaces that are bumped in that you've worked to get paint in in the cracks of the previous color will stay that other color. So it kind of creates a medium tone between the two where you have some aspects of the brick that are the color above and some aspects that are the new color that you've just mixed and that kind of helps get us get this really smooth transition so coming up next is really exciting as soon as we finish the blue here i absolutely loved and hated doing the dots along the outside of the wings in white um it was easy in some regards but then very difficult in others because it just, it took a lot to get the symmetry of the dots like bang on and it was a lot of looking at the reference photo and a lot of trying to make sure the pattern of each of these, you know, sections that I was filling in, the smaller sections was, was good. There's only a few areas I think at the end I went back over with black to really get the, you know, the webbing of the wing uh, exact. But yeah, this, uh, this next whole section here is going to be doing the white. So yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating painting on brick because as much as the grid is helpful for lining up symmetry in your work, it's also very obvious, at least to me as the painter, um, when something's not symmetric. So there was a couple areas in here that you can already see the spaces for white. Um, on the two yet to be painted that I'm doing right now are a lot bigger on the left than they are on the right. So I was kind of looking between those sections and then you kind of realize other areas of your mural that aren't symmetrical when you're doing this. So to do the white dots, I'm really just jumping around and trying to do it line by line. So I'm kind of doing the one on the left and then I flip over and do the one on the right. So it was a lot of walking back and forth. And I really just tried to pick one on the reference image that was easy to see and then do the ones above and below it, try and getting everything to match. But just the added contrast of having the pure white and the pure black of the outline of the butterfly framing the rainbow, I think really helped make the composition and the colors of this piece really stand out. This was a very warm day again uh, when I was painting the dots, but there's something so therapeutic about the progress and just seeing them slowly come together in the wings and I was so stoked by how this butterfly was turning out I just couldn't believe how quickly it was going on the wall I felt very lucky um, I knew I was gonna finish the painting today this was after four days of just a few hours each day that I was able to get this up and um, the speed at which I was moving on this project was a huge relief because I didn't, I couldn't afford to have it span weeks. Um, after this project, I was really excited to go and paint my own nursery for my child. So I had extra motivation to finish it and, uh, you know, so I could start my own, my own mural finally in my house, which will be coming up soon in a future video. But painting these dots was so satisfying as a conclusion 
and I just, every single one that went on, I felt like this rush of adrenaline because I just, oh, like what a great mural to have in Wyarton on Main Street uh, that people can come and visit all summer long. So if you're gonna come and make a trip up the Bruce Peninsula, please look for this mural. I would love to see your pictures. People have been tagging me in them. I'm going to go and do some lettering beside the mural. We have a hashtag. I'll uh, write it down in the comments below and you can go on Instagram. Recently, I got tagged in a picture of this butterfly with a bride. So somebody came all the way out to this mural on their wedding day and got a picture in their wedding dress in front of my butterfly wings. And that's just such a feeling as an artist that somebody took time out of a special day of their life like that to visit this spot. How cool is that? That's just, I can't even believe it. Like what, what a thing to wake up to. But yeah, we are packing up uh, the drop sheet and I did a quick little pose with the wings, you know, before I forgot. There we go with the bump. <laughs> and then we are going to zoom in close and get some lettering. So we wanted to do hashtag Team Lisk. These are my clients. So they have Century 21 and your local meat shop in Wyarton. Please check them out. Uh, you can get delicious local produce and all sorts of fun stuff. And then our hashtag is Explore the Bruce. This is a pretty common one that is used all up and down Grey Bruce in Ontario. And me on Instagram is at Sarah Ocean Artist. So my whole marine biology brand, I tried to do mostly ocean related stuff, uh, but lately I've completely branched out to including more wildlife artwork in a broader sense to kind of grow as an artist and develop my own style. So I do plan to return to being a mostly ocean artist at some point, um, but right now I have a young family that we're trying to support. So we are being diversified in our jobs that we're accepting. So you can see the last little bit of the lettering as I clean it up here with the wings beside it. I just, I don't, they don't even look real how vibrant they are with this paint. It's just kind of crazy. Um, they are that bright. I haven't souped up the saturation or anything on this. That's, that's just what they look like. It's just crazy. So these are the full wings and we finished this mural and baby's not born yet. And that is a wrap on our butterfly wing mural. Thank you so much for watching me paint these butterfly wings. I wanted to end with pictures of future murals. All of these are going to be coming to the channel very soon as we wrap up the summer of murals that we had going on. The Spider-Man mural I did for a kid's bedroom and my nursery mural I did, the ocean themed one in my own home, and also some vines that I did earlier in my pregnancy. And already on my channel is the 70 foot wall uh, highlighting the Bruce Peninsula. So you can check out that playlist up above and we'll see you soon.